We'll be listening to some music that we hope will help to warm up your efforts to stay in Brooklyn. Why the gauge and tolerance, of course. If you didn't already know, this vintage restaurant has been in business for quite a while. We transplanted our at your service microphone to Fulton Street in Brooklyn for a closer inspection of this established dining spot in the heart of the borough of Trees. And here's what we heard. Another chapter in our Portrait of a County, New York City's Kings County, by yours truly and intrepid Joe Cabibbo in the heart of downtown Brooklyn at one of the most famous landmarks in the entire city, Gage and Tallner's Restaurant. Right at the moment, I'm talking to Leon Gatskill. He just mentioned that he arrived at this restaurant in 1904 from Wilmington, South Carolina or North Carolina? Well, North Carolina. What brought you up here, Leon? Well, I came up here as a... I kind of a stray away from home. I left home when I was 11 years old. And I hit up in this part of the world, and I got hooked up here, and I stayed around here. But during that time, do, during that time, uh, I, I sailed boats up the Noose River from Newburn, North Carolina, to e- Elizabeth City. I used to sail a two-masted schooner. Hmm. When I was... 18 years old, I was the captain of a two-master ship. <laughs> well, what made you become a waiter? Well, I, I I got up this part of the country, and I got a job in here as a, as a little, you know, bus boy, and I kept hanging on, and I finally made it my career. Well, it's been and a doggone good one for you. I've been here ever since. I've, uh, if nothing happens to me, if I stay here until September the 15th, uh, this year I'll be here 59 years. Leon, I understand that you have some memories of Diamond Jim Brady visiting in this restaurant. Tell us about him. He was a personal friend of mine. Uh, he always went around with uh, about four or five girls, but he served himself first. <laughs> That's a fact. Even when he was in, uh, in the, he was out in the hospital uh, in down Baltimore, in the, in the John Hopkins Hospital. He'd ride way up here to get something to eat and go back to the hospital again. Yes, I know him well. What were his eating habits, Leon? What did he like to eat? Well, one of his uh, nice things that he did like to start his meal off with was a a watermelon cut in half and take the heart out of it and pour a pint of champagne in it. That is what he started off his meal with. Well, now, what would you, you drink that with a soup spoon? Okay, you eat it with a soup spoon, yeah, and drink it at the same time, yeah. <laughs> and he'd say to you, never mind the girls, take care of me, see? <laughs> but he always went around with a lot of good-looking girls. I guess you've seen an awful lot of changes here in this area of Brooklyn over those years. What was it like in 1904? You mean here, right here? Yes. Well, right here, this was like... This was called Uptown. This was actually called Uptown then in, in the 1904. Uh, this place was down the street about eight eight blocks. It, it was supposed to be then, you know, way downtown. And the horse cars was on at, on on Atlantic Avenue. It was uh, trolley cars on Fulton Street. It was elevators on Fulton Street. And uh, the Citizen Villain was on the corner of Adam and Fulton. The Eagle was on on Washington Street, and uh, of course now the the city hall has moved across the street. It was on this side of the street then, see? But uh, averagely, everything is just reversed now than it was in the, those days. So uh, all I could say would be that uh, it's like I used to tell some people coming here. That uh, it was hard for you to spend a dollar because you couldn't eat uh, the, eat so much. <laughs> you couldn't eat a dollar's worth. You couldn't eat a dollar's worth. No. <laughs> uh, in fact, we used to have uh, uh, behind the desk we had a rack of checks. You know those little cardboard checks. You know they only run up to one dollar. And any time you had anybody did happen to step overboard. And spend over a buck while you had to get the boss to get his eyeglasses out and get his pad and make out a check for you. See? <laughs> yeah. And otherwise than that, you just go up and say, give me a give me a twenty cent check, give me a thirty cent check, give me a fifty cent check. But if you ever reach the dollar, then you had to get the boss to put on his glasses and make out a check for you. 
Who were some of the other people that came in here in those days? Well, uh, personally, uh, I could go back to when uh, David Warfield was playing in the in the you know um, see the music master up at the Orpheum. Williams and Walker when they played here. In fact, uh, well, Williams and Walker used to have a special table arranged from here, right in the middle of the dining room. You, you remember those boys, don't you? Williams and Walker, Brad Williams. Uh, he was a fellow that uh, always said that uh, when he was on a ship, he got a little bit seasick, and he was leaning his head over the rail. He says, uh, "I'd rather have nothing all the time than something for just a little while." Ooh, overboard it would go. See, that was when he wrote the, wrote his song about "I'd rather have nothing all the time than something for just a little while." <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, when I was in, uh, I was in Florida in 1929. I used to go to Florida a couple of weeks in the winter time, and um, I was standing there behind one of the palm trees in our farm room in the old old Ponciano. And Mac Gannon was sitting down in the back. He couldn't see me good. He didn't know my name up by Leon. He just called me, "Hey, Gage and Tyler, come in." <laughs> yeah. And, uh, well, right offhand, there's so many of them I can't think if I had of, uh, thought this. I, I would have brought down some stuff with me. I got it all at home, you know, see? Well, now, the decor of this place hasn't changed a great deal. It looks substantially as it did back then, doesn't it? Well, it looks ex- <laughs> just about the same, only around the upper wall there used to be a, a row of animals like lions. Now this ceiling is changed, but this, this uh, under that ceiling there's fifteen thousand dollars worth of uh, uh, of your know, gold ceiling. It's covered up there now. See that whole that, that ceiling has changed. Uh, see and where this little curve here is, it used to be lions and elephants all around the whole room. Well, now, Leon, how have eating habits changed in the 50 years you've been here? Well, e- eating habits have got to the place that people don't care how much money they spend as long as they get enough to eat. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only difference I can make. Only in the old days they could get so much more for it. <laughs> well, now, uh, let's talk about the amount of food. You mentioned how much uh, Diamond Jim Brady would consume. Do people eat as much as they used to? They eat more. More. They eat more eat, even though they have to pay for it. I remember the time that when we used to give a choice of uh, uh, either French fried or baked potatoes with anything you ate, you couldn't get rid of them. Now you have to pay for them. And everybody wants them. I know the time you get uh, you baked potato for nothing. They didn't want it. <laughs> now you have to pay 40 cents for it. They want Everybody wants one. They... Leon, tell us about the insignia that you and all the other fellows wear on your sleeve. What does that mean? Well, the stripes mean one year. The stars mean five years. The eagles mean 25 years. Now, I have two eagles. One star, I think, is there. And the two stars, there should be a couple more on there, but I didn't bother about it. See, but it... I passed my 58th year in September. I understand, Leon, that they cook here at the Gage and Taller. They cook fish and meat over hard coal. That's What's right. that about? That's a, that's a, everything, unless you want it fried, is broiled over hard coal. The open furnace. It takes at least a half a ton of coal to even start a fire out there going. Anything you want fried has to be cooking on a different. But in the old days, everything mostly was broiled. Even then it was broiled? It mostly then it was broiled. But it, it, see, the fire never went out. They just rebuilt it every, every morning because we used to be open from 9 o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock at night. See, it's different from now what it was, you know, then, see. In those days, we worked six days a week, about 12 to 14 hours a day. And and no time off. 
Now, Leon, as you look back over those years, would you have done your career any other way? I don't think I would have. I think I have uh, accomplished what I didn't know I had started out uh, to do. I think I have accomplished the fact that I have gained the, the likeness of a lot of people in New York, and I imagine... If it came right down to a push, I'd be one of the best-known men in New York, in, in my, my line of business particular, at this time. I don't think there's any argument at all. Thank you, Leon Gaskill. Thank you, sir. In addition to sampling the cuisine and the environment, we ran into Gage and Toner customers who go back quite a way as customers. We met lawyers and bankers and doctors, actors, nightclub performers... And even a man whose forebearers trace back over 300 years in Brooklyn, long before the Battle of Long Island or the Battle of Brooklyn Heights. Another chapter in our Portrait of a County, King's County.